Integer type questions are very easy for me, but the MCQs are a little tough. Okay, so uh, what causes the negative marking? You make silly mistakes or they were issues with the concept? Sometimes it's silly mistakes and sometimes I guess uh, I make mistake in the formula itself. Okay, so that the issue was with in the formula, the issue was that you memorized the formula wrong or you chose the wrong formula? I chose the wrong formula. And what about your practice? Actually, in the case of thermodynamics. In thermodynamics, okay, that's great. So, did you practice all uh, JEPYQ in thermodynamics? Uh, for the I practiced all the questions from 2023, sir. I couldn't do more. Okay, you did 2023 only? Yes, uh, sir. 22, 21, 20, you didn't attempt those? No, questions. I didn't get time for that, sir. But the book that I shared with you does, didn't have 2023 questions. No? That, that have yes, I, I did them from uh, the other site, um, exam site. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, Marita, that 2023 questions, there are very slim chances that they will repeat. Okay, okay, okay sir. So you at least have to do uh, 2020 repeat. Okay, sir. Uh, And what about the exam dates of others? Krishna, when your exam? Sir, on 8th April. 8th April. Adil? Sir, mine on 6th. 6th. <laughs> Rehan? 6th April. 6th April. So you have 3 days. And uh, did you apply for Bitsat? Or any of, anyone of you? Did you apply for BITSAT? No. Do you know what is BITSAT? Do you know about BITSAT or not? Yes, sir. So you applied for BITSAT, Marita? Uh, no, sir. Okay. So see, uh, there are four uh, institutes, BITS. Birla Institute of Technology. There are four centers, Bits Plani, Bits Hyderabad, Bits Goa, and Bits Dubai. Bits Plani and uh, Hyderabad are one of the 20 best engineering colleges. In India. So uh, the exam, the last date for application is 6th of April. The exam of the BITSAT is on uh, maybe in some end of May. So you have plenty of time. The pattern is more or less like JE, except uh, the English. You have to study some basic grammar and all, all those things. So I have an aptitude test to throw. So I would recommend you should apply for a uh, bit set also. Bits is a really good engineering college. Very good faculties, good package, very good environment. So the last is sixth or sixth or ninth of April is the last date you should apply. It. So Ryan, did you apply for CUT? I told you to apply for CUT last class. Yes, Ryan. No. No. It's okay. So at least apply for which side? Keep options in your hand. So not don't just rely on one exam. Uh, apply for which side also. Anyway, so in the last lecture, we have uh, discussed about the Bohr's model. We have discussed the postulates of the Bohr model. The first one was the electrons will revolve in a particular orbit or shell. The angular momentum of the electron in those orbits is quantized. When electron move from one orbit to another, it will gain some energy and it will move from high to lower in an orbit, it will lose energy. So this, this is all what we have discussed. Now, on the basis of these postulates, you have to calculate four or five parameters. The first one is, and the first thing, that Bohr model is valid only for hydrogen or hydrogen-like. What does hydrogen-like mean, Rehan? Rehan, what does hydrogen-like mean? Marita, what does hydrogen-like mean? 
sir helium two uh, helium plus and lithium no helium two plus and lithium three plus ion having one electron na huh? hydrogen like means an atom or an ion which have just one electron so these are hydrogen like hydrogen helium plus lithium two plus barium three Okay, so using the postulates of Bohr, we have to calculate certain quantities. The first one is the radius of electron in the Bohr orbit. Radius of the Bohr orbit. So if electron is revolving in some orbit, you're supposed to calculate the radius of that orbit. This Z is the atomic number. Atomic number means the number of protons or the number of electrons. So when you, no need to derive all those things. When you derive it, it comes out to be this is the final expression. N square, N square. Z e square by pi. So n is the number of orbits. See, number of orbits cannot be in fraction. First orbit will be first orbit, second orbit, third orbit, fourth orbit. H is the Planck constant. Epsilon naught is the absolute permittivity. Z is the atomic number. Electronic charge, pi is the same constant, and m is the mass. So it's tough to memorize this whole expression. So what you can do, you should remember three things. You should remember how it depends upon n square. It's directly proportional to n square. You should remember how it depends upon z. It's inversely proportional to z. And you should remember how it depends upon mass, inversely proportional to mass, and how it depends upon charge, square of charge. This h square epsilon naught pi are not required. So you should remember that Rn is directly proportional to n square. It's inversely proportional to z. It's inversely proportional to m, inversely proportional to e square. So when you put the values of all constants, it comes out to be 0.59 n squared by z x strong. When n is the number of orbits, z is the atomic number. So that's the first relation of the radius of orbit. This is the radius of orbit. That you must This is radius of orbit. After this, the next is the velocity of electron in this orbit. So when you calculate velocity of electron, you just have to remember this expression. This is the velocity of electron. It's alpha C Z by N. C is the speed of light. Z is the atomic number. N is the number of orbit. And alpha is known as summer field fine structure constant, which is its value is one by one. So no need to memorize this expression. Even if you memorize this expression, it's tough to uh, keep it in mind up to your final exam. So the first is Bohr orbit, which is this one, n square h square epsilon naught by z square pi n. And when you substitute the value for constant, it comes out to be 0.5 to 9 n square by z strong. This is the expression for the velocity. And this is the expression of, uh, no, no need to remember this expression. Don't remember. Remember this one. This is alpha Cz by. So alpha is the summer field constant, speed of light, atomic number, and number of orbits. After this, the next is energy of electron. So if an electron is revolving around the nucleus, then its energy will have both. Due to its motion, it will have kinetic energy and it will have potential energy also. So first thing that you should memorize is this. Potential energy is minus of twice of kinetic energy. This is expression for potential energy. And when you calculate total energy, it comes out to be this expression. So you should remember these two expressions. So again, you have to remember that energy depends upon fourth power of charge. It's directly proportional to mass. It's directly proportional to z square and inversely proportional to n square. No need to memorize these things. No need to memorize these. You just have to memorize E, M, Z, and N dimensions. And again, when you substitute the values of all constants, it comes out to be minus 13.6 Z square by N square. Again, no need of derivation. And then you have to remember these results. Like potential energy is minus of twice of kinetic energy and total energy is minus of kinetic energy. So if you remember this expression, if you have kinetic energy, you can easily calculate total energy. Or if you have total energy from this expression, you can easily calculate kinetic energy. If you have kinetic energy, then you can calculate potential energy. 
after energy the harmonic should be any other just hold it on please no need to write the entire derivation just write this expression for the whole orbit this expression and this expression hold it on Written, Rehan, Krishna. Yes, I do. Yes. Next, uh, note down this expression for velocity. No need to uh, write this one. Just write this expression on this. One. This is velocity of electron. Huh? This is velocity of electron in energy. Written? Yes, sir. Next, in energy of electron, first just noted down this expression. This is the total energy of electron. Write the expression of total energy. Note down both the expressions. This one as well. Done, sir. Okay. Then just this one also. Huh? Potential energy is minus twice of kinetic energy and total energy is minus of kinetic. Done, sir. Okay, there's one more thing. See, this negative sign here this negative sign. This negative sign shows that the system is bounded. If total energy is negative, that means this is a bounded system. And uh, not this is not the right. So this is the energy with which electron is bounded with the nucleus. If you want to remove this electron, then you have to supply some extra energy. That extra energy is known as binding. So binding energy is the energy required to remove electron. And binding energy is minus of total. So this is the energy required to remove electron from the orbit. And this is minus of total story number. Yes, written? Yes, sir. Sure. Okay, solve this question, the first question of the series. Let's note on this one. Pradeshini, when is your final exam? When is your exam? Uh, on 10th, sir. 10th, right. Do it.
So I hope you have written the question. Pradeshini, just take screenshots. I think came late. Uh, take screenshot of this radius of over orbit. This one and this one, these two. No need to do entire derivation. Just take a screenshot of this thing. You need to remember this expression, and when you put the value of constant, comes out. Uh, taken, sir. Then take the screenshot of this expression. Only this. One. This is the expression of velocity of electron alpha c z by n. Alpha is one by one. So here z is the atomic number. N is the number of orbit. And then. Sir. Then uh, take screenshot of this. This is energy. Expression of energy e to the power four m z square by eight epsilon naught n square n square, which is minus thirteen point six z square by. Ah, uh, Marita, let me check and take screenshot of this. Potential energy is minus twice of kinetic energy and total energy is minus. Okay, which state of triply ionized beryllium has same orbital radius as that of ground state of hydrogen? Mida state means number of orbit. Huh? It can't. Oh, be sorry, better. sorry, read the first one. Okay, you read the first one. So, this one. Adriel, answer. Rehan. Sir, even I read the first one. Okay, you do read the first one. Let's do the second. First one. Yes, can I scroll? Answers. This is straightforward. You just have to compare the radius. Nth radius of nth orbit of beryllium with the ground state of hydrogen. Ground state means n equal to 1. You just have to calculate the value of n for beryllium. Krishna, your exam is on 8th, no? 8th April? Yes, sir. Okay. Good, Vaidu. See, so you just have to compare the, the radius of nth orbit of beryllium, which is equal to the radius of first orbit of hydrogen. Rehan, what is the formula for calculating radius, orbital radius? First. Pradeshini, formula for calculating orbital radius. Go ahead. Uh, 0 0.529 into n square by z into a. n square by z. Huh? Engstrom, a is engstrom. Unit. So 0.529 n square for beryllium z is 4. For hydrogen, 0.529. N is 1. It's given for that's a ground state by Z is 1. So it gets cancelled out. This N square comes out. Four N comes out. So this is the second order. So second orbit of beryllium, the radius of the second orbit of beryllium is equal to the orbit radius of the ground state. Rehan, is it clear? Yes, sir. No, no. Okay, now do a similar question. This one. No need to do the second part. You know how to compare the orbital state. Do the energy.
answer see for all advanced numericals you should be able to uh, solve these basics one good merit that's right pradarshini rehan krishna answers good rehan very good so again just have to compare the energy so it's minus 13.6 Z square by N square, lithium Z is three, hydrogen it's one, N is not known for lithium, but for hydrogen it's one and compound. Very good. Adil, you getting the same answer? Yes, sir. So, next, you have to draw the energy level diagram. And while drawing energy level diagram, we will learn that energy levels are quantized. We'll understand what this quantization is. So to draw energy level diagram using this expression minus thirteen point six z square by n square for hydrogen I am taking so I am putting z equal to one. I'll take all energies n equal to one, n equal to three, n equal to four, and all, and n equal to infinite these energies. So when I put n equal to one, the energy comes out to be minus thirteen point six. When I put n equal to two, the energy comes out to be minus three point four. When I take n equal to three, it's minus thirteen point six per three square. When I take n equal to infinite, n equal to infinite means your electron is outside that. E infinity comes out to be zero. Another thing, n equal to one is known as ground state. N equal to two is known as first excited state. N equal to three is known as second excited state. N equal to infinite means ionized atom is ionized. Now you can draw the energy level diagram. For n equal to one, your energy is minus thirteen point six. For n equal to two, the energy is minus three point four. N equal to three minus one point five one. N equal to infinite energies. Now, important characteristics of this energy level type. The first thing: energy is quantized. See, electron can have a minimum energy of minus thirteen point six. After thirteen point six, next higher energy is minus three point. There is no energy in between minus thirteen point six and three point four. So, the first thing, first conclusion that you can draw from this. Energy level diagram is that energy is quantized. The first conclusion that you can draw is energy is quantized. The second conclusion is when you move from n equal to one to n equal to infinity, this decreases, becomes less negative. That means energy is infinite. So the first conclusion. This is the second conclusion that on increasing the value of n, your energy becomes less negative, which means it's increasing. And what is the maximum value? Maximum value is zero. An electron will have maximum energy when it is ionized, when it is out of that. Next interesting thing. So if this is an electron in ground state, it is minus thirteen point six energy. In first excited state, its energy is minus three point four. The difference of energy is ten point two electron. Now, to move from ground state to first excited state, this much of energy is required, ten point two electron. Now, if there is an electron in the ground state and you supply this ten point two electron volt of energy, then it will move to first excited state or n equal to two state. But what will happen if you provide this electron energy less than ten point two electron? Like if you provide an energy of ten electron, the question is: Will this electron absorb an energy of ten electron? The answer is: Let's check. In ground state, the energy is minus thirteen point six. If it absorbs an energy of ten electron, then its energy will become minus of thirty three point six electron. And there is no energy level corresponding to minus three point six. After thirteen point six, you have directly minus three point six, which means no, your electron will not absorb this ten electron volt of energy. Which means that electrons will absorb only those energies which are corresponding to the difference in energy levels. Means this electron can either absorb ten point two and can move to n equal to two level. Or it can absorb the difference of this one, n equal to one minus thirteen point six and minus one point five. 
If it absorbs an energy corresponding to that difference, then it will jump to an equal position. So from here, you can say that electrons will absorb only some particular energies which are corresponding to the difference in their energy levels. This statement can be extended that electrons can absorb only those frequencies which are corresponding to the energy level. So this is statement number four. It can absorb only those energies which are different, corresponding to the difference in energy level. Electron will not absorb every energy. The next thing is, when electron jump from higher to lower energy level, it will emit energy. Now, just like absorbing energy, it cannot emit every possible energy. It can emit only those energies which are corresponding to the difference in energy level. Means when an electron jump from 2 to 1, it will emit an energy of 10.2 electron. When it jump from 3 to 2, it will emit an energy of 1.7 electron. So it cannot emit all energies. It can emit only those energies which are corresponding to the difference in energy. So it absorbs this energy. It can emit this energy. If you know this energy, then you can calculate frequency also. You can equate it to H. Similarly, here also, you can equate it to H. Next, this is known as absorption spectrum. When electron is absorbing energy and when it is emitting energy, this is known as emission spectrum. So one thing is very clear, electron can absorb or emit only those energies which are corresponding to difference in energy levels. So this is the explanation of energies quantized and this will give rise to line spectrum. The spectrum will be a line spectrum. This is the explanation why atoms have line spectrum? This is the explanation. See, the majority of questions that will come into board portal will be using this concept in one way or another. It should be very, very clear that atom cannot absorb all energies and the atom cannot emit those all energies. It can emit or absorb only those energies. And when you have energy, you can connect frequency and wavelength. Energy is HD or HD by lambda. So it can absorb or emit only those energies or those frequencies which are corresponding to the difference in energy. Yeah, is it clear or you have any doubt? We can discuss it. Adriel, Krishna, Rehan, Marita, is yes. it clear? It's okay. Okay, just do one thing. Write energy level diagram of hydrogen. Energy level diagram of hydrogen. No, no need to write out this. Just draw this energy level diagram. And for n equal to 1, write ground state. This is the ground state. This is first excited state. This is second excited state. And here it will get ionized. And write these points. So first point, that energy is quantized. Second point, that energy increases. Third point, that energy is maximum when your atom is ionized, when your electron is outside the atom. Then write the fourth pointer, that when electron jumps from low to a high energy state, they absorb energy. 
and try to relate this energy with frequency and wavelength. It's at C by lambda. This is known as absorption spectrum. Yeah, every have one have drawn this diagram. Rehan, Maida. Yes, sir. I write down these pointers, huh? fourth point, fifth point, sixth point. Majority of questions that we will do on Bohr's model will be using these points in one form or another. And the sixth point is the explanation for the line spectrum. Why the spectrums are, all atoms have line spectrum, this is the reason. That atoms cannot emit all energies. It will emit particular energies, particular frequencies. So when you see those frequencies, you will see lines. Yes, can I scroll? Yes, sir. Done, sir. Everyone have written up to him? Yes, sir. Okay. After this, the next thing is Okay, let's quickly just see what does emission spectrum and the absorption spectrum means. See, this is the emission spectrum. This is uh, some hot gas. It could be hydrogen if you are making the emission spectrum of hydrogen, and this is the hot gas. This is a background, which is a black background. When you excite this gas, means initially all electrons of hydrogen was in ground state. You excited this gas, means you provide some current or something to this gas, so that electrons move to higher excited state. In higher excited state, the electron cannot stay for a very long time. It will eventually come back to the ground state. So from the high energy state, when they come to the ground state, they emit radiation. These electrons emit radiation, and when you plot those radiation, you will see the emission spectrum. See some colored lines on the dark background. These colored lines are corresponding to the emitted frequency. 
See, in absorption spectrum, what we do, we take cold gas, means we'll take hydrogen gas so that all electrons are in ground state. You take a high density hot matter, or you can take a source of light, light source. When the light of this source passes through the gas, if you are talking about the spectrum of hydrogen, then it's hydrogen. Then what will happen? Hydrogen will emit some of the frequencies. And when you pass it through a prism and you draw the entire spectrum, then you will, the energies absorbed by the gas are represented by these dark lines, black lines. So these colored lines are the frequencies emitted by the gas and the dark lines are the frequencies absorbed by the gas. These lines will exactly match because gas can absorb only those frequencies which can emit. So uh, no need to draw it. No one is going to ask this diagram, but it should be in your mind how we obtain the emission spectrum and how we obtain the absorption spectrum. And then this is the last topic, and then we'll do numerical spectral series of hydrogen. See, what happens in hydrogen is when uh, you take some hydrogen gas, you provide some energy to the hydrogen gas so that electrons move to the higher energy state. When these electrons from the higher energy state come back to the ground state, they emit some energy. So when they emit energy, they emit radiation. You can calculate the wavelength of that radiation. So if you uh, keep those emitted radiation and those emitted radiation will look like this. Huh? They'll look like this emission spectrum. So these radiations will make group. You can see here, here, you have two lines. I can draw more lines here. You will have two lines here. I can draw more lines here. So you will get this spectrum in the form of group. You will have a group of closely spaced lines. Then you will have a group of closely spaced lines. And then you will have a group of closely spaced lines. These groups are known as series. The important thing about these series is many, many properties of all lines in a series will match. And how we obtain the spectrum, it's simple. We obtain the spectrum and electrons jump from the higher energy state to the ground state. Now, if you want to calculate the wavelength of the emitted light, this is the rate relation to calculate wavelength, 1 by lambda is Rh square, 1 by N1 square, minus 1 by N1 square. Rh is the Rydberg constant. Its value is this, 1.09 into 10 minus power 7. Z is the atomic number. I wrote a very general expression, which is valid for uh, all cases. N1 is the lower energy level. So this is N1. N2 is the higher energy level. So electrons jump from high energy level to low energy. And the emitted wavelengths are this. Lambda is the emitted So here, just note down the name of the topic, spectral series of hydrogen. Then draw this diagram. That when electrons jump from high energy state N2 to low energy state N1, it will emit some radiation, some wavelength. I hope all have written up here. Next, note down this expression. 1 by lambda is R is Z square. 1 by N1 square minus 1 by N1. And R H is this. Z is the atomic number. N1 is the lower energy level. N2 is the higher.
Next is the series. Now I am calculating particularly for the hydrogens. For hydrogen in this expression, I'll put Z equal to one. The first series is the Lyman series. For Lyman series, N1 is one. Means lower energy level is one. N1 is one. Higher energy level could be anything. Like electron can come from second energy level to the ground state. Or they can come from third energy level to the ground state. Or they can come from fourth energy level to the ground state. Or at last, they can come from infinity to the ground state. This is the Lyman series. Lyman series means we fix the lower energy level to one. Higher energy level could be anything. So N1 is 1, N2 is 2, 3, 4 up to infinite. So here, instead of N1, I will substitute 1 in this equation. Instead of N1, I am substituting 1. So it's 1 by 1 square minus 1 by 1 square. So this is how we calculate the spectral wavelength of line. Now, there are two lines which are important. The first one is the alpha line. Alpha line means the first line. In any spectrum, if he asks you to calculate the alpha line, alpha line is the first line. First line means 2 to 1. Beta line, 3 to 1. Gamma line, 4 to 1. So these are the lines. Huh? Alpha lines is 2 to 1. Beta line is 3 to 1. Gamma line is 4 to 1. So for alpha line, N2 is 2. The first line of any series is line, alpha line. So it's 2 to 1. Second here is 3 to 1. The third line is 4 to 1. So you can call it beta line. Now, if you want to calculate the line having minimum wavelength, then the for the wavelength to be minimum, energy difference to be maximum. See, E is HC by lambda. So lambda and E are inversely proportional. So if I compare here, from 2 to 1 and infinity to 1, Adrian, which transition will have maximum energy? The transition of 2 to 1 or transition of infinity to 1? Adrian, which transition will have maximum energy? Maximum will have a 2 to 1. No. As you go to the higher energy level, the energy difference increases. Na? This infinity to 1 will have maximum energy. This will have minimum energy. Okay. So, which transition will correspond to minimum wavelength, Marita? Which transition will correspond to minimum wavelength? Infinity to one. Infinity to one, because energy and wavelength are inversely proportional. So, you can see that for infinity to one, the wavelength is minimum. And uh, Pradarshini, can you guess which transition will correspond to maximum wavelength? Uh, 2 to 1, sir. 2 to 1, where energy difference is made. So this will correspond to the minimum wave, maximum wave. So just like Lyman series, Lyman series will lie in UV region, ultraviolet. After Lyman, you can calculate three more series, like Bamo series. For Bamo series, N1 is 2. You fix the lower energy level to 2, and high energy level could be 3, 4, 5, and 3. For the maximum wavelength, it's the first line, 3 to 2 transition. For minimum wavelength, it's the last line, infinity to 2 transition. It lies in the visible region. Similarly, you have partial series. For partial, we fix the low energy level to 3, and high energy level will be 4, 5, and 3. So for the maximum wavelength, the first transition. For the minimum wavelength, it's the last transition. And it lies in the infrared region. For bracket, lower energy level is 4, higher energy level 5, 6, 7 up to infinity. First transition, 5 to 4 is the one which have maximum wavelength. Infinity to 4 is the last transition. This will have minimum wavelength. And then you have last point series, n1 is 5, n2 is 6, 7 up to infinity. It also lies in the infrared. No doubt. Then we will start doing the variables. So for every series, you have to remember the transition which corresponds to minimum wavelength and the transition that corresponds to the maximum. Just give me one second. Questions. 
Rehan, is it clear all line of this series? Yes, sir. No need to draw this diagram. No need to draw it. So every series for Bama's series, the lower energy level is two. We fix N1 at two. N2 could be three to infinite. Then you have to uh, remember that the transition which corresponds to the maximum wave, first transition is 3 to 2. Then the transition which corresponds to the minimum wave is the last transition. Yes, written. Can I scroll it now? Rehan. Yes, sir.
हाँ जी रिटर्न ओके आफ्टर दिस विच टू फ्यू क्वेश्चन सी द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन So this is the first question. So x different wavelengths may be observed as spectrum from hydrogen sample if the atoms are excited to the state with principal quantum number six. Means this is first level, this is second level, this is third level, this is fourth, this is fifth, this is sixth. You have to count all possible transitions. See what can be the possible transition. First could be. Six to five. Electron was initially in ground state. Then you excite it to n equal to six. So n equal to six is the higher energy state. So you have to calculate all possible wavelengths that can be emitted, or you have to calculate all possible transitions. So all possible transitions could be six to five, and then it could be five to four, then it could be four to three, then it could be three to one, then it could be two, or it can be directly from six to four. Or it can be directly from six to three, or it can be directly from six to two, or it can be directly from six. To Similarly, it can be from five to three, or it can be from five to two, or it can be from five to one. So you have to count all possible combinations. You can either do it manually, or what you can do is you can just use this equation: n n minus one divided. So when you put the value of n here, it's six. It's six minus one divided by two, so it gets cancelled out. So it comes out to zero. These are the possible transitions which are, which can be there, or all possible wavelengths that can be. There. So you can count it manually also, or you can do what you can just use this simple relation n n minus. Is it clear? Krishna, Krishna, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, please just note it down. This is again from the JP by P. No need to write the question. Just write the solution. Let's do one more question. This will be uh, involved numerical. It will involve numerical. 
uh, it will involve modern physics, photoelectric effect, magnetics. Now, please read this question and try to identify what relations we will be using here. In your notebook, just note down what formula you will be using here and what concepts you will be using to solve this. We will do it together, but at least note down the relations that we will use. Formula. At least write down all relations that you will be using in this numeric. Okay, now let's do it together. So the first thing, so the question says that you have a hydrogen atom and the radiation which is coming from this transition treatment is incident on gold surface to generate photoelectrons. So the radiation which is coming due to this transition is incident on a gold surface. Due to this photon, this photo, this electron gets emitted. This electron will have some velocity. Then this emitted electron is made to pass through a magnetic field. So the magnetic field is perpendicular. The path of the electron will become circular. The radius of the circular path is given. This is 7. Is asking about the work function. So this numerical is involving three concepts. One is board model. Another is the atomic structure. Sorry, board model, then photoelectric effect, and then magnetics. So it's not a tough question, just a bit involved. Simple formula, three simple formula, and we'll do solve it. First of all, you need uh, energy that is coming out of this. So energy delta E will be. It's E3 minus E. Now, how do you calculate E3? Minus 13.6 by n square. So, it will be minus of 13.6 divided by 3 square. And it will be minus of 13.6 by 2 square. When you do it, I'm just checking something from the solution answers where I can save them. It's 1.89. It comes out to be 1.8. Otherwise, we'll waste time in this calculation. So, this is the energy. Now, this energy is going to incident over this photoelectric surface. So, you need kinetic energy, the expression of kinetic energy. So, this is these are the photons which are coming from the hydrogen atom or the radiation which is coming from the hydrogen atom and this radiation is incidenting over the photoelectric surface. So due to this radiation, the electrons will get emitted. The expression for the kinetic energy of emitted electrons is E minus 1. This E here is it. So kinetic energy is also not known. This E is this 1.89. Minus phi. You have to calculate this phi naught. But to calculate this phi naught, you need this kinetic energy. To, to, for this kinetic energy, this data is given. That electron is passing through a magnetic. It's moving in a circular path. Radius of the circular path is 7. So uh, then magnetics. Radius of a circular path for an electron is R is mv divided by q. So from here, you can calculate your V to be R into QV divided by M. 
So you can calculate the values. How much is R? R is 7 mm. It's 7 into 10 raised to the power of minus 3. Charge of electron is known. 1.6 into 10 raised to the power of minus 9. Strength of magnetic field is given. 5 into 10 raised to the power of minus 4. Mass is also given. Huh? After getting this kind of velocity, you can calculate the kinetic energy of electron, which is half mv square. But there is one small catch: this kinetic energy will come into joules because your velocity is in meter per second. So to convert this joule into electron volt, you have to divide it by 1.6 into 10 raised to the power of minus 9, so that it gets converted into electron volt. Got it. Everything is in it. So again, I'm just checking what's the calculation. 1.075. It comes out to be 1.075. So you can substitute all these values here. You have kinetic energy. You have total energy. You can calculate the value. Fine. Just substitute kinetic energy. So we'll have 1.075, which is equal to the total energy, which is 1.8. Minus. Yes, is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Just note it down. We'll do more questions on this. In modern physics, it's usually connect all topics, atom, photoelectric effect, along with the magnetics and collision.
do it okay we'll do it together but at least write down the relation that we'll be using here and the given quantities make a strategy in your mind at how will you approach in this problem Marita, can you explain how will you approach in this numerical? Just Marita, if you get this question in your exam, how will you approach it? So just a minute. Hmm. Uh, we have to find the energy of the electron in the second excited state. Okay. And uh, we have to uh, use the photoelectric e equation. But uh, how would you use this three electron? The energy with which the electron is approaching the proton. How would you use this three electron? And how will you decide which and ener what energy will be emitted from that? Up to here, you are completely correct that you will be calculating energy in the second side state. But you have to use how will you use this data of three electron volt? And how will you decide? Three electron volt is the potential energy of the electron. No, this is the energy with which your uh, electron is projected. Huh? So uh, what you can do is you can consider this as the total energy of electron emission. When your electron comes to be the second excited state, that is the final energy. And the energy corresponding to this three electron volt and the energy in the second excited state will get emitted. And that emitted energy is falling on the photosensitive cell. So here what we yes, do is we'll first calculate energy in the third excited state which is minus of 13.6 by 3 square. This is hydrogen. Now. So it will be minus 1.5. This we did while we were drawing energy limit. Now this energy will get absorbed by, uh, not, not absorbed. Sorry. This is the in initial energy of the electron. And this is the final energy of the electron when energy is revolving around. So the energy gain or loss will be three minus minus of 1.51, which is equal to 4.51. So this is the energy which is emitted by that. And this energy is getting incident on the photosensitive surface whose threshold wavelength is. So what's the formula for calculating the kinetic energy, Krishna? Kinetic energy of emitted electrons. Do you remember Einstein's photoelectric equation? Yes, sir. E minus uh, minus kinetic energy is equal to E minus minus. So it will be E minus minus. And when the threshold wavelength is given, then instead of phi naught, we write Hc by L. So now you have everything. You have kinetic energy here. This is what you are supposed to calculate. You have total energy 4.5. You have threshold wavelength, which is 4000 angstrom. Hc is 12400 divided by 4000. So this is the kinetic energy. Next. Yes, is it clear? Rayan, positioning? Yes, sir. No, no, no. We'll do one more. Question. I'm just picking those questions which are very, very important. I'm not taking straightforward questions. 
The paper is very mixed. You will get both type of questions, some straightforward questions, some very tricky questions. So I'm not picking straightforward questions, right? Picking only those questions where you can have problems. So in the next question, also do the same thing. You first read the question, note down the given quantities, then try to decide what relations, what concepts are using here, and then we'll solve it together. And after the class, read about BitSat, discuss with your parents, and fill that form, which is a very, very good instrument. And it does not come under CVT or under J. Conduct its own exam. Which Pilani and which Hyderabad are very, very. Yeah, can I scroll now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now read this question. Note down the given quantities. Try to think how will you calculate the ionization potential. Try to think how will you calculate the ionization. So to uh, think about ionization potential, the steps are first think about ionization energy. Then you can come to ionization. Adriel, can you explain how will you proceed in this numeric? Rehan? Krishna? How will you proceed in this numeric? Uh, so we have the mass of the particle so we can get the mass by multiplying the electron the charge so mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. um, yeah. the ionization energy i think first we can find the uh, wavelength and then mm -hmm. how will you calculate the ionization energy see what does ionization mean let's first calculate the ionization energy for hydrogen and then we'll see what is ionization energy of this atom with which you are replacing electron by something. So let's first do the ionization energy of hydrogen. Ionization energy. Adril, will you calculate the ionization energy of hydrogen? Uh, 13.5. Yeah. So ionization energy is energy required to take electron from n equal to 1 to n equal to infinity. So at n equal to infinity, it's zero electron pool. In the ground state, it's minus of 13.6. So ionization energy is just energy in the infinite state minus of the energy in the ground state, which comes out to be 13.6 electron plus 3. This is the ionization. Now, if you have ionization energy, you can calculate ionization potential also. So this is the relation between energy and potential. We did this thing in a photoelectric effect also. So if you have energy, so you can calculate potential corresponding to that energy is divided by. So what you can do is potential is your energy 
divided by E, energy is 13.6, but energy is not in volt, like joules. So convert this into joules by multiplying with 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 90. Divided by E, which is 1.6 into 10 raised to the power of minus 19. So this 10 raised to the power of minus 19 will get cancelled out with this 10 raised to minus 19, and you have just 13.64. Or in short, you can remember that if ionization energy is 13.6 electron volt, then the potential corresponding to this energy 13.6 volt. You can remember this directly. If energy is two electron volt, then the potential corresponding to that energy is two. So we get ionization potential for hydrogen, but hydrogen is not required. It's required for a new atom whose mass is two zero time. So to do this, you should remember what is the relation between the energy of electron and its mass. So I ask you to memorize like in the expression of energy, how energy depends upon mass, how it depends upon charge, how it depends upon Z and how it depends upon N. Energy is proportional to mass, right? Or is it proportional to square of mass? Please check those expressions. Yes, it was proportional to mass or something else. Just mass. Mass. Just proportional to mass. So instead of electron, if you are using a particle whose mass is 207 times, then what will happen with the energy? So the energy of the new atom will become 20 times the energy of the hydrogen atom. That's it. So for hydrogen, your potential is 13.6. So the new one, your inner potential will be 207 multiplied by 13.6. This is the potential of the new Haji, clear? Is it clear now? So why 207? It's because it's given. It's given that the new particle is 207. So the question, instead of electron is using a particle whose mass is 207 times, so energy will simply become 207. Let's take one more question. That is an easy question. Krishna, is it clear? Yes, sir. Rehan? Yes, sir. Let's do one more numerical. Sit. And then the next part is finished. No, read this question. And try to decide how will you approach. This is easy.
Okay. So you just have to calculate the first and the third line of the Baumer series. So what is the value of N1 in the Baumer series? Is it 2? For Baumer series, we can write this as RH. 1 by 1 square. Name not 1 by 2 square minus 1. This is Baumer series. When you're calculating the first value, uh, no, Marita, um, some calculation mistake again. For the first one, what is the value of N2 for the first line? Rehan? Value of N2 for the first line of Lyman series? Three. Three, yes. So one by two squared minus one. So it comes out to be 1 by lambda 1 is RH. 1 by 4 minus 1 by 9 is 36. 5 by first equation. Similarly, if I calculate 1 by lambda 3, it comes out to be RH. 1 by 1 square, 2 square minus 1 by 5 square. Right. For first line, it's 3 to 2. Second line is 4 to 2. Third line is 5 to 2. So 1 by 2 square minus 1 by 5 square. So it comes out to be lambda 3. It's RH. It's 1 by 8 minus 1 by 25. So if I take 8 into 25, is it zero? It's 25 minus 8. 25 minus 8 is 25 minus 8 is 17. Huh? Now what we can do is we can just divide. So what you need, you need lambda 1 by lambda 3. Okay, let's divide them. So this will cancel this one. So this will be lambda 3 divided by lambda 1. When you divide them, it will come to the numerator, which is 5 by 36 into 17. And this 8 into 25 will go to the numerator. Now we can take inverse lambda 1 over lambda 3. It comes out to be 36 into 17 by 5 eighths of 40 into 25. You can cancel it with this for 9 and for 10. Let's do it with the cap. 9 into 17 by 25 by 10. Point six one. Point six one. So lambda one by lambda three is let me check again nine into seventeen and right now. Thirty six into seventeen, five into fourteen, twenty five, four nine, four ten, nine into seventeen by two fifty. So nine into seventeen one fifty three divided by two two point six. Yeah, point six. But Answer, you can write this in this form also, 6.1 into 10 raised to the power of minus 1. Here, it is in the form of x into 10 raised to minus 1. So instead of x, this is 6.1. So you can round it off to 6. X. So this is an easy question. This is how 
the concept of Lyman, Bauer, and partial city scan. Okay, so this completes your atom. The next class, we will uh, continue, try to finish nuclear, nucleus as part. We have one more class with me. I will take class on fifth also. So on fifth, I will finish nucleus. Sir, for second equation, should be 21 by 100, right? Yes. This one, no? Yes, sir. Yeah, you can just adjust it. Okay, so I'll stop here. I'll practice questions of Atom. Uh, in the next class, we will continue with this. Uh, Nucleus. We'll finish nucleus on fifth level. I'm taking class on fifth level. And for all those who have uh, exams on eighth or tenth, we keeps may may keep some extra class. While well, Adil, so what is this? Uh, the class is over. If you want, you can leave. Adriel and Rehan.